going to be performing uh, manual white counts, and we're going to be using whole blood EDTA, okay, well mixed, very important to have a good aliquot. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the different kits we're going to use. Um, we're going to do two specimens today, but you're going to do them two different ways, with two different dilutions, two different uh, diluting methods. Both of the methods we're going to do today are going to lyse the red cells, okay? So the only thing that's going to be left is your white cells, okay? Platelets are also going to be there, but platelets are going to be very much smaller and harder to see. So this is called the Leuco kit, and this is what has replaced um, the Unipets for the most part, okay? And as you can see, they come in a little vial. The diluent is already pre-measured. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to label it with my ID. And then what I'm going to do is pop the top. And I'm going to take a little capillary pipette out of here. They're marked end to end and they say 20 microliters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Shake one out, get it ready to go, and then I'm going to take my blood, and just like you filled your capillary tubes for the hematocrit, you're just going to touch the end of the blood with the capillary tube, okay, and fill it up all the way, and then just take a kin wipe and just wipe off the outside edge, okay, you don't want to draw any fluid out. And then you're just going to take that whole capillary tube and pop it right in the vial. And then you're just going to mix, 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 okay, until the blood comes out of the capillary tube, okay. We're going to let that lyse the red cells for at least 10 minutes. So we're going to set it aside, and then I'm going to show you the second way we're going to do this today, okay. We're going to make our own manual dilution, and I've got a little specimen cup here and a lid, and I've got pipettes, okay? The green pipette at your table should be set to 10 microliters, okay? If it's not, you can adjust it by turning the knob, but I set them this morning, so they should be good to go. The silver one is also adjustable, and it should be set to 100 microliters, and I'm using these because we can use the same um, size pipette tips on these. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a 1 to 50 dilution. And I'm going to do that by using 10 microliters of my whole blood and I'm going to add 500 microliters of 2% glacial acetic acid. 2% glacial acetic acid, if you want to smell it, do you remember how to smell? Yeah? Mmm. What's that smell like? <laughs> I don't know. You got a stuffy nose. Stuffy I can't smell nose. It. <laughs> Reminds me of Easter eggs. It's vinegar, basically. Okay, two percent glacial acetic acid is just vinegar, and that's going to lyse our red cells. Okay, so you have little um, vials that have been aliquoted for you at your table that are labeled. We'll get that ready, and you put your pipette tip on by just pressing down coming back up. Take your top off and carefully go down into the blood. You want to depress the plunger. When you're in the blood, release the plunger and it will aspirate out the correct amount. You want to take your Kim wipe and just wipe the outside of the pipette and you're going to put it down in the bottom of your little sample cup. To release the tip, you just pull up on the plunger and it pops off for you. Okay, now I'm going to add my glacial acetic acid and set this, since this is set for 100 microliters, I've got to pipette five Go times. On. Okay, so plunger down, aspirate, okay, there's 100, 200, 300, 400. Okay. And then you can use your little pipette tip to mix. And see how it's kind of uh, clear red right now? We 
want that to turn kind of a brownish, cloudy color as it sits. Okay. Is that because of the release of the hemoglobin? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, it's already turning. turning. Yeah, it's already turning. We can put our little top on it and label it. And we'll let that sit for 10 minutes too. So in the meantime, I've got those ready to go, and those are good for like four hours. Okay, don't worry about And that worry one needs to mixy mixy. The little one does not. I'll mixy mixy oh. before I plate it up. It's just I'm worried about it leaking out of the. I don't have a little sample cup. Okay, here's my hemocytometer, and it you can count on it being dirty from the last person that used it. So what I'm going to do is, um, would you grab me an isopropyl alcohol prep? I knew I'd forget something. So the way you clean these is just with an isopropyl alcohol prep. And you're just going to do it carefully. So pick up the um, cover slip. And again, these are special cover slips. They're heavier than the ones you've, you're used to. And they're about five bucks a piece. So just be really careful with it. And then when you clean it, you only want to handle it by the long edges. To clean the hemocytometer, you're just going to gently take your isopropyl alcohol prep and just wipe it clean. Then with a chem wipe, you can dry it off carefully. And you can dry that off. And then the cover slip is going to fit directly over the hemocytometer. So see how there's two kind of glass, shiny glasses, and the depression in between it is called the moat. You're going to put the cover slip right over that so it's centered, okay? To focus on this, remember how we talked about how um, in hemocytometer, we like a lot of light. Well, we're going back to looking at unstained material or wet material. So we want to bring our condenser down on this. And it's really going to increase the refractive index and make those cells pop. So to focus, put on your stage. And again, remember the trick with the 40 objective. Be real careful you don't come down on the cover slip and, and crack it. So if we find our 40, pull it pretty close to right above the cover slip, and then go back to your 10, a really easy place to focus is the arrow. Okay? The arrow's on either side of the hemocytometer, and the arrow points towards the grid. And it's a good place to focus. So if you can focus on that arrow, and then it's going to point you towards the grid, you can just move right up to the grid so you can see it. Okay, so trick on focusing. Through the process of time-lapse photography, <laughs> this has sat for 10 minutes. You can use these other capillary tubes to plate, but you'll probably have more control if you use your pipette. So I'm going to go ahead and use my pipette, put a new tip on, and you guys are going to plate both sides of the hemocytometer with the same dilution. But since we're going to look at both of them together, I'm going to plate one side with the leukotic, which is a 1 to 20, and one side with the glacial acetic, which is a 1 to 50, so we can see the difference. Okay, so you can just go in, make sure it's well mixed again. And then I'm just going to guide my tip so it rests in the V or the arrow. And I'm just going to depress my plunger ever so slightly so I can fill the chamber. It looks easy when you try it. It's not as easy as you think it is. And see how I haven't overfilled the chamber? If I had, you could see it in the moat. Then I'm going to get a new tip on. Is that a bad thing if it goes in the moat? Yeah, if it goes in the moat, you got to start again. Okay, because it's going to grab the cells and drag them with. And then you'll get a false.